Um, first of all, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. It is still the Christmas season. Uh, open your Bibles to John 1 1. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. Um, we're going to talk about what the Spirit of God does in the Scripture today. And it's the same Spirit that filled Jesus when He was here. Uh, it's the same power that made heaven and earth. It is the same power that rose Jesus from the dead. And I'm going to make a very bold statement here. And this is actually, it shouldn't be bold. It should be normal. But it, it, I'm going to probably do it in a bold way. The Holy Spirit has a vision for you and your family this year. The Holy Spirit has a vision for this church this year. A vision is an incredibly important thing. It is, except for God Himself, is probably the most important thing. The book of Proverbs tells us people without a vision will perish. So let's look at this in John 1 1 today. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, and he came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light that gives light to everyone who is coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to do that which was his own, to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet all who did receive him, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Word of God for the people of God and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's get real. Uh, how many of you have already broken your New Year's resolutions yet? Yeah, and, and, okay, we've got some honesty. 8.30 lied. <laughs> they, they, I said, did you? And nobody raised their hands. And they started looking around like this. And looking, I said, y'all didn't make them. And they went, oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, now, other question. What did you think about 2019? No response, this is a rhetorical question. I spoke very firmly to 2019 on December 31st when I went to bed at 9.30. And I told 29, 2019 not to let the doorknob hit in the back of the head on the way out the door. Okay? Lots of cool things happened for me and my family in 2019. Lots of extremely uncool things happened to me and my family in 2019. And it shall be gone in Jesus' name because this is 2020. And maybe you felt like that yourself. I don't know. But anyway, New Year's Day is the time when people make a lot of re um, re resolutions, okay? And they're going to change themselves or seek a new vision or, or how to improve their lives, all right? Uh, but if you think about it, it's an arbitrary day. New Year's Day is, uh, is different for a lot of cultures in the world. For us, it's January the 1st. Chinese New Year, I think, is January 21 through... February 21, there's a lunar calendar involved there. Um, the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah, actually happens in the autumn. It's different for different cultures. It's fairly arbitrary. But when I look at the Word this morning and how the Lord was creating everything and everyone through Jesus Christ, I realized that that was on the first New Year's Day because it was the first day, it was the first year, it was the first moment. <coughs> And then you look at how this speaks to God's Word and God's life and God's light. I realize, and I hope you realize, that you don't need January 1st for a new beginning. Nobody does. You don't need January 1st for a new vision. A new vision can come any day. Why? Because a new vision is always possible because the light of God still shines. Now look, I know it's sunny right now, but and some of you may have moved from other states, but this is Alabama, and in Alabama, in the winter, 
it's cloudy and it's rainy. Have you noticed that you know we needed to build an ark recently? All right, it's wet, but that's life and that's winter in Alabama. Whatever darkness though might be sort of above us in the clouds or before us, things we might have to deal with in the future, or stuff that's behind us that we've had to deal with, or maybe sometimes there is darkness within. Look, I'm testifying to y'all. The light of God shines in whatever darkness it is, like the scripture said, and the darkness has not overcome it and never will. The light still shines. You do not need to wait for a new beginning or a new vision because the light still shines. Now, here's my question for you. What vision is God giving you that you can see because of His light? What is He doing in your life? How was 2019 a prep for 2020? Everything is precious. We don't need to be muddling around here. The light is still shining. What do we see? Now, somebody said something to me the other day, and I'll ask you to put it this way. Do you like fireflies? I know they're a summer bug, but do you like fireflies? Come on. I got you. All right. Look, if God can make a bug's butt light up, <laughs> what light is God giving you? What vision is God giving you that you can see through this light? Because if the light's off, you can't see anything. But if the light's off, what cannot be seen? What vision do you see for yourself and for your family through God's light? How are you going to grow spiritually this year? How are you going to get out of the spiritual rut if you are in one? Maybe you're in one you don't realize it. For 2,000 years, and in Judaism before this, there were basically three ways that people got close to God, and in our case, through Jesus Christ. The first is worshiping with other Christians. Second is praying with other Christians. And third is consuming and digesting the Word of God with other Christians. And some people say, you know, I tried that before. But let me tell you something, Sherlock. You tried dieting before, too. And we all know how that went. We all know that this, dieting is not hard. I'm sorry. I, I, it's not. We know the diet that works these days that causes people not to be so heavy. It is increased protein intake, high vegetable intake, and low to zero carbohydrate intake with moderate exercise. That's how it's done. Every single diet book says something like that. Okay, so now you may give me my $10 million book advance. Okay? <laughs> We all know how to get out of spiritual ruts. Worship with other Christians, pray with other Christians, and consume and digest the Word of God with other Christians. It is not a secret. There is no special spiritual thing. Okay? There's no gymnastics involved here. What is lacking is not God. What is lacking is our will. Folks, do not ask the Lord to guide your footsteps if you're not willing to move your feet. So what do we do? First, we worship with other Christians. I will see you at 8.30 and 10.45 on Sunday mornings. Okay? If you don't know the Lord made heaven and earth, the Lord who made heaven and earth, you can know Him through worshiping Him. The Lord inhabits the praises of His people. There is something ineffable about worship that transcends the other ways of knowing God. Think about that great song of praise. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. Usually we sing this so slow that we don't really understand what it means. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, the, thy power throughout the universe displayed and then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. God lives and inhabits the praises of his people. Worship the Lord in that light. Worship the Lord and the light will get brighter and the vision will be clearer. Now, second thing is prayer. We know God together in worship and we can know Him intimately when we pray with other Christians. We can also pray in a retreat in our own place alone, but the other day, I was wanting to pray about something, and one of my kids, who shall go nameless, came in the room, and we prayed together. And it was like 
ten or a hundred fold more powerful. It's amazing when you pray with other people. Those of you, with, I don't have brothers and sisters. I'm an only child raised by only children, which makes me the ultimate psychological nightmare. But <laughs> those of you with other brothers and sisters, many times you may have hung out with family and the siblings are all there and their kids and whatever. And But then you had those times when it was just you and mom or just you and dad and it was really cool. Those are both images for expression of prayer. Sometimes you're with the whole family and it's loud and it's raucous, or maybe you're with the whole family and it's really reflected and quiet. Or sometimes it's just you and God the Father. Both of those kinds of times are needed. That's where the light gets brighter in different ways. That's where the vision gets clearer. And you have to watch though, that this, that a lot of people talk about you know going and praying in the deer stand and praying in the boat and praying in the car on the way to work. All that's wonderful, do that. I'm not saying don't do it. But you've got to watch praying alone. Why? Because our hearts lie to us. Uh, for years, uh, maybe even centuries now, uh, people have been urging people to follow their heart. Okay? And I listened to that many times. And I did that. And some stuff happened. Okay? And I figured something out. My heart lies. And I listen to other people and their exploits of listening to their heart. And sometimes the heart is right, sometimes, but, but a lot of times the heart lies. Don't necessarily listen to your heart. Listen to the Word of God. Pray with other Christians, especially your family. Pray the Word of God with other Christians. There, this is a part of prayer that, that, that is sorely lacking, I think, in the entire Christian church. There are prayers written in the Bible. We pray the Lord's Prayer quite regularly. Try to do it every week. Uh, but there are prayers that are written in the Bible that are meant to guide us in prayer. You say, Pastor, where are they? I'm like, go look for them. Oh, ye who hunger and thirst after the Word of God. I'm not going to do everything for you. Go find them. In the rush of life, do not forget to pray alone. And of course not. In the rush of life, do not forget to pray with other Christians. Now, real quick before I go on to the third thing, I want to talk about something, a little side here. Um, many times we have wounds, okay, or all of us do, really. Um, past hurts. And a lot of times when pastors are trying to encourage or cajole, uh, like I'm doing right now for the benefit of our souls, sometimes this sort of triggers the wounds. And, and, it, and it can lead to some feelings and thoughts and ideas that maybe you aren't enough, so to speak, okay? That's the exact opposite of my intent. I am sure that all of you know what a Band-Aid is. I don't have any Band-Aids in my house because I have kids who play doctor. Okay, they're not playing nurse, they're playing like surgeon, all right? Because I'm, I'm ready, you know, <laughs> for them to play be surgeons and I'll go to the beach, but anyway. Um, but Band-Aids are for outside wounds. <clears throat> Worship and prayer and the Word of God are for our inside wounds. And I want you to remember something always. No matter how it feels, because your heart's going to lie to you. Right now, you are enough as you are. I submit to you that you are more than enough as you are. Why? Because the Lord is Himself more than enough for us all. And He is where our strength comes from. People... Um, when, when life is tough, people, uh, you know, they come alongside us like the friends of Job, you know, and they say, you know, be strong, be strong, be tough. I have a suggestion for you, and I get this from a pastor named Pete Gregg. Um, don't be strong. Don't be strong at all. Instead, and I know this is a very controversial idea, be weak. God's grace and transforming power is more than enough for you and I. And His power is made perfect in what? Weakness. That's what the Word says. So unclench your fist, open your hands, and, and don't stand, kneel. My challenge for you today is not only to let His light illuminate His vision for you, but friends, dare to be vulnerable. Dare to be vulnerable because you're not going to access the vision any other way. 
The Holy Spirit has a vision for you, your family, and for this church for 2020 and beyond. And we have to be vulnerable to experience it, and that is hard because we are well-accomplished, professional type people that have lots of degrees and even more experience. Do you know how many degrees exist under the roof of your parsonage? Seven. What are we going to use all that junk for? All of that may lie to us. Honest weakness takes courage, a bravery that the world does not know. And honest weakness, though, is part of a humble and contrite heart that the Lord wants to use. That kind of honesty will bond you with God in ways that you can't imagine. It will bring depth to your life in ways that you can't imagine. It will deepen your relationship with God and connect you with the people who are truly right for your soul. It will also allow you to give God's grace to people who don't know God, who need it. Now the third and final thing here is this. Just don't read the Word of God. Any atheist or pagan can do that. Consume and digest the Word of God for other Christians. Who's read Ezekiel 3? Yes, it's a test. Deal with it. <laughs> Come on! What was the prophet Ezekiel instructed to do? He was instructed to eat the scroll. There's lots of images in the scripture. Y'all need to go to Sunday school, by the way. <laughs> uh, of eating and digesting the Word of God. But do it with other Christians. Because the heart can lie to you. Get in class, Bible study, whatever. If you do nothing else, read Ephesians the book of Ephesians, and look at it. Do that this week. Break out the book of Ephesians. Pretty short. Read it. And this was this comes from a film called Overcomer. And usually, I, I don't have a lot of patience with Christian cinema because the production value is so low. But actually, this is sort of a quantum leap. This is actually a really good movie. Um, look at Ephesians and ask yourself the question, what does this say uh, about who a believer is in Christ. What does this book say about who a believer is in Christ? And you will find that it says basically these things. That you are created by God. You are not a mistake. Jesus dies, died for you that you might be forgiven. The Lord picked you and made you His own. He redeems you. That means He wants you. You're not unwanted. <laughs> He showed you grace so that He could be saved. He has a future for you because He loves you. You are no longer people who have to be uncertain or blind or incapacitated by wounds from the past. In Christ, you are a child of God, and He is going to take you on a journey this year. And we and you and I on this journey will change. <coughs> we will not stay the way we are. But we will be more than enough, than enough because He is more than enough. And in that light, we will see His vision. Now, what vision do you see? For, well, what vision do you see for this church through God's light? We are going to know Jesus and make Him known and plant His churches at home around the world. And church staff and church leadership are going to participate in a time during 2020 of praying for God's vision about how we can do that kind of church planting here in the Madison area. But first, Alice Mockenstern is going to return to mission and ministry in Uganda for a short time. She'll be doing evangelism and women's ministry. Second, on July 31st, uh, Rebecca Sloan, you met her at the announcement, and her sister Jessie, and maybe one other church member that really needs to get back to me, uh, are going to head off to rural Mongolia for evangelism and church planting there. And while this is not completely confirmed, I am looking at going to Thailand in August for the same. So please be in prayer for these things. Also, please be in prayer for our partners in China, although we haven't been there in a while, because things there are bad and getting worse. Now, it is also time to start seriously thinking 
about playing a significant role in planting a new church in the Madison area. The population of Madison is going to significantly increase in the next 10 years. And many only see this as a traffic problem. We see this through the light and vision of the Lord Jesus. There are lost souls coming to our community. They need Jesus more than we need comfort. So we will reach out. We will disciple. We will share the good news about Jesus. And we should humble ourselves and make ourselves vulnerable to the Lord and dare to plant a new church again. And yes, I said again. We did it before. It was a long time ago now, but you may have heard it. It's this little bitty church called Asbury. <laughs> Only the Lord can give possibility to what the world thinks is an impossible vision. Only the Lord has the light to show the way. And to do that, we've got to have fresh wind and fresh fire from the Holy Spirit. So look, the church staff and leadership and I ask the whole church, all of you, to invest in 2020, to seek the light, to pray and to fast, and to call on the power of the Holy Spirit, to plead the blood of Jesus over Madison, and to see God's light showing off His vision. I'm going to lead you in prayer right now. And I want you to reflect on these things. I've transferred a lot of information in a very short amount of time. But it's important stuff. I'm not going to lay back and trifle away 2020 or 21 or 22, 23, 24, whatever. I'm not going to be distracted by the stuff that's going on in the muckety muck. We're going to do what we do, and we're going to do it well with the light of Christ, with His vision, and with His power. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, um, give us time to process this. Give us time to own this. Speak and whisper these things into our hearts and let us ponder them. Because it's time for God's people to act like God's church again. Lord, we ask you to send your revival to Methodism. That it would be made new all over again. That it would again be restored to its place. We be for your instrument and not the instrument of clergy retirement and property ownership and political positions. That people might know you and make you known and whole new congregations we start over in the world. Lord, there's a lot of darkness in the world, but there is your light. That darkness is around us, in front of us, behind us, and in us. But your light will not overcome it. We pray this in Jesus' name.